Hi, and welcome to this quick tool review. This time around, we're going to review a vacuum pump. No, not this one that I reviewed before. This is the Elatech that I reviewed that was $500. This time around, we got a vacuum pump from Vivor uh, that is a five cubic feet a minute uh, as opposed to a nine cubic feet a minute vacuum pump, third horsepower, uh, good down to five pascals or 0 0.038 millimeters of mercury uh, vacuum. And why am I reviewing another one? Well, they offered and my sister is a middle school science teacher and she could use it for her lab to teach students. So I thought, what the heck, two birds, one stone, let's proceed. So we have the Vivor vacuum chamber with pump and the vacuum pump you just saw that I bought was $500 and it did not come with a vacuum uh, chamber. This one comes with a chamber and it's listing at $169.99 on Amazon. The vacuum chamber I bought separately was something like 100, 125 bucks. So just the vacuum chamber I bought alone is the cost of this whole package. So let's see uh, how well it uh, compares. The box was in pretty rough shape because uh, the UPS guys did not handle it nicely at all. However, uh, the internal contents look to be in surprisingly good shape. I am really impressed, uh, considering that the top is, a well, it's acrylic, so it's not glass like the one I have. And uh, they put some nice uh, material around it. That's a beautiful looking chamber, actually, chamber lid. I think I like the acrylic better than I like the glass that came with mine. And mine was more expensive. So it's a five gallon, five gallon chamber that it came with. Stainless steel, including gauges and hoses. It also came with a silicon mat. I'm not sure what their intentions were for this. That's another interesting addition. Maybe to put in the bottom for overflows. And an additional gasket to go around the lip of the container. So I guess they're planning on sealing silicone to silicone. So this has some sort of grid on it. So I'm going to clean this with alcohol before I put it on because you want it to make a good seal. After I cleaned the gasket off with some alcohol, it went from being uh, smooth to sticky, which is interesting, uh, to the feel to the hand. So apparently I took some oil off of it too uh, when I was cleaning with some isopropyl, I'm trying to rotate it around so it makes a good seal. Uh, it's a pretty rough gasket, but I think it should work. It looks like it, uh, if you get it lined up right, it'll, it should work out. We'll give that a test next. So there's the very nice stainless steel five gallon container, seam welded and, and welded on the bottom is also, uh, also, so it's not an extruded stainless steel. It's a three piece stainless steel. Top part was rolled as a cylinder, seam welded, bottom was welded on separately. Everything was protected extremely well. I'm very impressed. Uh, some of the stuff you get from China is not so well protected. Uh, this stuff is, uh, it arrived very, in very good condition. Uh, this is a nice feature. Uh, this is a dual valve uh, vacuum assembly. So here's for the inlet from the pump. And this is the outlet when you're letting outside air in. It's got a filter with it so you don't bring in debris into your container. So you've got two valves, one to pull the vacuum, one to let air in, and a silicone oil filled uh, a pressure gauge that goes down to uh, 30 millimeters of mercury uh, of vacuum. Also uh, down to minus 100 kilopascals. Is that what that's saying? Oh, it's bar, which is really where it says bar and then says hundreds of kilopascals. And I think uh, you don't go negative kilopascals either. Maybe it's drawing down from atmospheric. Uh, atmospheric pressure is 101.325 kilopascal, or 101.325 pascals. So if this is minus 100 pascals, it shouldn't go negative. It should just go to zero. So I'm really confused about that. I have zero pascals is a vacuum. Uh, anyways, uh, this thing supposedly goes down to five pascals. Uh, whereas atmospheric pressure again is 101, 325 pascals roughly. It varies where you are on the planet, weather conditions, etc. Um, 
<clears throat> five pascals makes it a medium vacuum. So this is typical for like air conditioning pumps and that sort of thing. It's not a high vacuum, which would require something like a turbo molecular pump or a diffusion pump, both of which are exceptionally expensive and used for semiconductor and uh, plating industries. Let's uh, pop the pump out of here. Alrighty, so here's the pump itself. Significantly lighter than the other pump I had. Uh, the one you just saw uh, probably weighs like 35 pounds. This, 1520, a lot lighter. Uh, it does have a smaller electric motor on it, uh, which would certainly make it lighter. They're claiming it's full copper wound motor, so it's not an inexpensive motor. Although, I, to be honest, I don't think I've seen too many non-copper wound motors, but uh, let's just go with it. It's got a manual. Oh, I cut the manual when I opened it up. They put it on top right where the seam was and uh, I cut it in half. That's unfortunate. Very readable. So this pump is an oil-based pump like my other one. There are also non-oil-based pumps. Uh, this is a rotary vein pump. The non-oil-based pumps are a lot more expensive and uh, have components that wear out even faster than the oil-based pumps. Uh, but they do have the advantage of not getting oil uh, all over the place. Uh, my other one, I put a filter sock over the, the expansion uh, exhaust on. And uh, I'll probably give my sister something similar for this one, presuming it will also let uh, oil exhaust out. <clears throat> nice packaging. And it looks like there's a little bit of oil... They preload it with oil? No, it is not preloaded with oil. And I don't think it came with any. Oh, that's interesting. So you've got to go out and get oil. So you can see there is a huge difference in size between this pump and this pump. Five cubic feet a minute, nine cubic feet a minute. This is a two-stage pump, which means there's two stages of pumping, which basically means you suck a vacuum at the first stage, and then the second stage sucks that vacuum even lower. Uh, so it probably gets a little bit lower than this one. Uh, this is a one-stage pump. It did not come with oil. Fortunately, I had a little bit of oil left over from this guy. They gave me a little bit extra, so I'll use that in here and fill it up so that uh, we can at least try it out. You can buy the, the special vacuum pump oil on Amazon. This is a special ultra-refined uh, uh, mineral oil, so uh, we're going to need to get some more of that at some point but let's uh, fill this guy up and give it a test. The oil fill port is right here. And I think I just have enough oil to almost fill it all the way up, not quite enough. I'll use all of this and it won't be quite enough. It'll be, it'll probably be adequate to not have a problem, but it won't fill it up to the top. Cause I think it's 170 milliliters and there's 150 in here. Oh. Darn it. <laughs> so much for that. That is not enough. We're going to have to order some oil. Because I am below minimum, so we can't run this guy. That's disappointing. So know that if you're going to order this, you've got to order some oil. <laughs> Warning, do not use without oil. So let's go forward with the description before I test this guy out. So this is the exhaust. This thing unscrews like the other one does. And it's sort of a place to capture some of the gases uh, and try and condense a little bit of the oil before it gets blown out and potentially um, make it a little quieter. You got to take this off before operation. It does say it right here. There is a warning, which I'm going to leave on here. Uh, do, this has temperature protection built in, so if it gets too hot, it will shut itself down, which is a nice feature because they do tend to get really hot, just like the other one. Um, not made for corrosive gases. Uh, do not exhaust in the atmosphere for a long time. So what I do is I take this guy and I take one of the filter socks I bought, a box of that I use for my surface grinder to clean the material. This is only a 50 micron. It would be possibly better to have uh, a smaller one. And I just cut off the steel ring and I just uh, take a rubber band and put it over this. And all that does is it captures most of the oil, which is which is kind of key for this thing because it gets oil everywhere. But you know, I've got this filter sock, but I would bet a regular sock would work reasonably well. This just probably filters a little bit better because along with water vapor, 
I ended up with a lot of oil vapor being mixed in the air. That's why it runs out of oil eventually, because it exhausts some. So uh, definitely do something to protect your lungs. It's mineral oil. It's not particularly toxic. It's what they use to make fake fog, among other things. But again, it has some added ingredients, and I don't know about them. And still, not good to breathe the oil long term anyhow. <clears throat> it has anti-vibration feet and an interesting base on it. That's uh, kind of neat. So the oil level is just barely above minimum. So I probably could turn it on safely. So we may give this guy a, uh, a test. They do say it's quieter than the other one. So I'm kind of interested about that because uh, my other vacuum pump is not quiet as you are well aware. The vacuum pump comes with two different connectors, which is nice. Uh, that makes it very convenient. When you're not using the pump, you should probably seal, uh, seal both ports or seal the hose if you leave the hose on uh, because you don't want debris getting into the pump. Uh, the O-rings might need to be replaced at some point in time, so remember they're there in case you start getting a vacuum leak. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Can I thread this on with this in place? Look at that. That's interesting. I wonder what they thought about uh, <laughs> How this was supposed to go on at the factory. This is the handle here and I can I can loosen it and probably remove it uh, but I think that's pretty odd. They didn't think about how you get this on. I could also loosen this uh, stainless steel clamp uh, so that I can get in there and I'm probably gonna have to because I can't tighten it with it on there which is sort of humorous. So I've loosened the clamp just so I can screw this on. That wasn't uh, too much forethought on their part. Obviously they never had anyone receive the packages shipped and then try and assemble it because they have a problem. That's pretty weird. Be sure when you're tightening this to use your proper metric crescent wrench. Oh wait, I used a standard eight inch. Oh no, <laughs> this is not adjustable metric. Anyways, I was able to tighten this, get good metal on metal contact and we're gonna retighten this guy so that it makes a good seal. It of course is metric as well, like most of the world, just not us. I've got this guy cinched down tight so that it's uh, pressed into the O-ring inside. And uh, we should be good to hook up the valve assembly on the lid and test this guy and see if it makes a decent vacuum. The lid looks easy to assemble. Has two silicon O-rings, some backing washers, a gasket, which is kind of interesting, an O-ring on top. And uh, just push this guy through. Put the silicon spacer with the backup washer. I like this lid better than the one that came with the other one I got, which is mounted in the side of the chamber, and I never was a big fan of that. I'm not sure how much you should crank on this guy uh, because all of the force is going into compressing the silicon O-ring. Um, at some point, you might damage it if you tighten too much, so you got to be careful. So I'm just going to give it a little snug since that was finger tight. I think that'll uh, be okay. This thing's moving like it's spring-loaded now. There's a really great silicon gasket on the outside of the acrylic here. That's kind of a cool mold they've got there. All right, let's uh, hook up the rest of this and give it a test. As an observation, taking the hose on and off this barb is going to be kind of a pain. So I think uh, if you're going to assemble and disassemble this setup and not leave it together, then you're going to want some sort of quick connect if they make one for vacuums. Got to remember to remove the exhaust cap. And I'm going to put this guy over it to collect all of the uh, mist. So now some of the mist you should expect is just water vapor. Um, I might even run it without it at first, just so you can see. And then I'll, uh, I'll cover it up so that uh, I don't have to breathe all the vapors because I'm pretty sure it's going to produce them. My other one did, and I assume that's, that's just normal. So I won't be able to run this guy for too long. Uh, until I actually get the rest of the vacuum oil because it is above minimum, but it's not a lot above minimum. So we don't want to push this. Uh, let's turn it on. Wow. Holy cow. It's much, much, much quieter than the other vacuum pump. And right off the bat, it's sucking a vacuum. Wow, is this quiet. Light years quieter than the Elitech, my other one that was 400 and something dollars. 
So this been, thing's been running a short while and it's already down to uh, 27 inches of mercury, uh, which is pretty impressive. So when you're sucking a vacuum, the first part goes fast, the end goes kind of slow. Let's see if, how much of a leak we've got. Wow. Also better than my other setup, uh, the way it, it's uh, not leaking noticeably at all right here. You can't, my other one leaks pretty quickly. Uh, this one, not bad at all. You're not seeing a change in the gauge. And just to prove it, there's letting air back in the container. Still partial vacuum. And down we go. You can see it moves pretty quickly until the end. And you may be able to catch some of the mist coming off of the pump over there. Here's a really good test. Here's a jumbo jet puff marshmallow, and they're always fun. They're full of air inside. And so when you suck a vacuum, let's rotate this around so you can see it. So when they suck a vacuum, the air expands because the outside pressure is now less than the pressure inside the tiny little air bubbles trapped inside the, the uh, marshmallow. So let's turn this guy on. And I had left the uh, valve open. That was brilliant. And let's zoom in and watch the marshmallow. You know, I'm not sure you can see it without a scale. The marshmallow has more than doubled in size already. All right, let's try this again. This should make it somewhat easier for you to see. Close the outside air off. Turn the pump on. Watch the vacuum get sucked out. Now, as this expands, some of those air bubbles are gonna pop, which is why it doesn't return to original size. It actually becomes smaller because some of the air bubbles that are coming out, you know, that are expanding are actually popping in the marshmallow. So the marshmallow is at least 50% larger. And watch it return to smaller than its original size. And the beauty is after experiment like this is, I get to eat this. I get to eat this guy. It's like an old man marshmallow. <laughs> That's very funny. All right, on this next experiment, you guys have probably seen uh, water boil in a vacuum chamber before. If you haven't, it's the same reason why water boils at a lower temperature at a higher altitude. And the reason is, is because the vapor pressure or the atmospheric pressure around it is lower. So the thing that keeps a liquid in a liquid state is vapor pressure, essentially. If the vapor pressure of the liquid exceeds the vapor pre pressure of the environment, it evaporates or boils. And so at higher altitudes where there's lower pressure, water boils at a lower temperature, which makes sense, right? Uh, because there's lower pressure pushing all the water molecules in the liquid and holding them in place. So they tend to be able to break free and turn into a gas more readily. So this is alcohol and alcohol has a lower vapor pressure than water. So it should boil even sooner. That way we don't have to wait as long. And I don't have to suck a bunch of water into my vacuum pump. So there is some action at the surface there, but it's very subtle and you can't see it. It is turning into a vapor, but you really can't. I don't think you can see it very well. Let's see if we can zoom in. This might be, oh, there you go. Now it's boiling. There you can see the alcohol is now boiling in a rolling boil as the uh, pressure gets down to 27 millimeters of mercury. And if I turn the pump off, and let in the outside pressure, it stops almost immediately. So here's an interesting one. This is a Ziploc bag and they come sealed from the factory. But as you can see, there's gotta be a little bit of air in there. Let's just test that theory. Close the valve to the outside air, suck a vacuum.
I'm not sure how airtight the Ziploc bag actually is, but I thought this would be a fun experiment. I'd kind of expect it to blow itself up a little bit, which it is. So when I showed you the Ziploc bag, it was almost entirely flat, and now it's blowing itself up like a balloon. That's because the molecules inside, without the surrounding air pressing in on them, are now free to push themselves, push against themselves, and push each other apart. And now the essentially empty bag, it looked empty, is blowing itself up like a balloon. And if I turn off the vacuum pump and I let in the outside air, it will go back to flat again. All right, I know if I don't, the, if you don't see this pop, you're not gonna be satisfied. Let's see if we can do that. So now we're gonna start it with a little bit of air inside, not flat anymore. So now we're not starting it from flat, factory sealed. I blew a little air in there, so there's air and water vapor. I didn't have a good seal. I had to give it a little press. It might be getting the silicon dirty under here. I should set it somewhere where it won't uh, get dirty. And there we go. Blowing itself up hugely already. And there you go, pop. <laughs> so with all the testing I just did, this guy just got a little bit warm, not overheat by any stretch. Uh, the motor itself is pretty warm, but not, nothing exceptional. Um, again, it has safety protection so that it can't overheat. Uh, all in all, I give this one a big thumbs up. So if you're looking for an inexpensive vacuum pump and you don't have necessarily critical uh, vacuum uh, needs like uh, specialized vacuum needs this might very well be the vacuum pump for you uh, i mean if you want a higher end pump than the one i've got uh, edwards makes pumps that are several thousand dollars for a two-stage oil-based pump and they're they're about the same displacement but they cost many thousands of dollars so there you go uh, if you're just doing something once in a while this might very well be the thing for you because it's quiet it's quick and it's efficient big thumbs up